Okay, welcome back everybody to my Space Engineer's Beginner's Guide. Um, now, if you recall from our last episode yesterday, we started building up this mining ship via a projector, or a projection I should say, and as I said I would do, um, I then offline, I've actually finished building it up so that we had it all ready to us for us uh, this episode. Now, a couple of things that uh, I want to point out. In regards to our projector, if we just jump in here, find our projector. Now, if you recall, we had show only buildable and keep projection. We had keep projection turned off. Now, if you notice, our projector is, in essence, has now reset. These are all unavailable, and well, there's no blueprint in it. That's because with that turned off. Every time you build up an item as part of the projection, it actually removes it from the projection. It appears to, anyway. This is my interpretation of what seems to be happening. So, as you get closer to completing the the, uh, the item, uh, you're reducing the number of projected elements until there are zero projected elements left, in which case there is nothing to project. In which case, with this turned off, you have to check the box in here, ticked or marked, selected. Um, to save space, it basically removes the projection out of the, the blueprint out of the projector. If we had have had that selected, it would actually retain a copy of the, the blueprint so that once you finish building it up, the copy would still be held in the projector and as soon as you remove the original item, you would then again see the projection. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you do work with projectors, that if you're wanting to build more than one of a particular item or if you add a and I've seen this done, I've um, keen them themselves do this with a couple of ships. They actually build a ship and they put, they take a blueprint of it, but they actually then build a projector on the ship, and then they have that projection in the projector, that blueprint in the projector, overlaid exactly on the ship. So if the ship takes damage, you can then come along with your welder and just weld up the damage point, because you can see you know, if, if an element or an item gets removed, um, and you can weld up the ship and it's a nice way of, of repairing the ship because the ship is already knows what it should look like all you have to do is weld it so that is one way of using a, a projector which is actually quite good so in a case like that you would have that keep blueprint turned on um, yeah, keep projection I should say you keep that projection turned on and that way it always retains a copy of itself there for reuse. Now this particular ship has got, you notice this arrangement at the back here, you could, you could see it in the projection uh, in the blueprint that was being projected but a little explanation as to what this is. This excuse me uh, just trying to figure out what the hell that element is let's just check that one um, small to her cargo container. How bizarre. Um, not even sure why I would have actually put that there. That just seems a bit odd. Alright, what this arrangement is, right from where my cursor is there at the moment, with the little the three arrows, like, look like sergeant stripes. From there down is an ejector. Uh, it's an ejector arrangement using a, com a small conveyor sorter, which is our sergeant stripe looking thing here, to sort out in this case, just the stone. If we jump in here and find our sorter, uh, do it the simple way, sort, small conveyor sorter, and it is whitelisted for stone only. It's not set for drain all, however. Now that means it will just only allow stone to pass through it, but it won't actively pull the stone through it. Now, our, these items here, they're like connectors, they're like this thing here but they're a small grid variant that is set up purely as an ejector. It is purely designed to eject, and in this case, it is set to collect all and throw out. That's these two settings at the bottom here. So rather than the sorter draining all, so rather than the sorter pulling everything through it that is set in, the, in this case, the whitelist, our ejectors themselves are set to pull everything it can, ev literally everything it can, 
it's trying to pull everything it can. So collect all, it's trying to collect everything through that conveyor sorter. It's just the sorter is only limiting it to only allowing the stone through. So it's a bit of a, a different way of arranging it. Uh, I'm actually not sure why I set it up this way, but that's what that does. Now in this case, we've got that small cargo container there. And I think that is basically just used as a storage to store whatever excess that the ejectors themselves can't handle. I honestly think that's a bit of a stupid way of doing it. But in this case, since we need the stone or want the stone as well, and there's not much stone in what we're going to actually mine, we're actually going to remove that. So here's our trusty grinder and we'll take it right off at our source. Bye bye. And we will actually grind that up. Right. No, I don't think there's anything there, no, nothing in there. Now, the reason why there is what, four of these ejectors, it lets us actually eject four times the material than we would if we just had the one. doesn't target really nicely sometimes. Alright. Now, the other thing that we need to be mindful of, there we go, let's put them on the back in there, is you can see we've got our connector is down underneath, which means this is designed to either expel goods through the connector and have them collected. Now, I showed you the, the collector um, block right early in the piece when we were actually were passing um, components from one point remember it was spitting out through uh, a connector like this into a collector which was sitting on top of the small card container so we could set up a collector and and use conveyor to pipe it into our refinery um, now yeah, that's one way of doing it or we can actually just set up an actual connector so that we can dock it now the advantage of actually docking it up it allows us to actually materials back into the ship into its cargo container if we do wish to um, so that we might be able to then you know we could possibly potentially use it then as a, a cargo ship so we can go elsewhere and have some raw materials with us to be able to build stuff up and stuff like that so for now however we will set up a just a connector so that we can actually dock it and I've just been looking at where we're going to set this thing up and I think on the side here, we'll have to take some convey out from the side here and we'll bring it up to about here somewhere. I think that should give us enough room at the back of the ship there. Ooh, might even have to come out a bit further. I'm just worried about this convey here. In which case... Ooh, okay, hit the ground a bit hard. Notice my health has gone down a bit there. So in this case, we'll actually bring the convey around the side and up to about the same height up to here. Just gives us more room between the back of the ship and that particular conveyor there so that we don't risk damaging anything so let's grab some of them some of them some of them and some of them Over here, heal ourselves up, 
recharge our energy packs. And I think we will also recharge our hydrogen bottles. Just to be on the safe side. Now. sorting everything out from there. Now that does put a little bit of a chink in how we, how I initially stated we could expand that refinery by adding another one to the front there, but we can just as easily expand our platform at this side and stick another one at the back here, it really doesn't matter, or we can just stick it over the other side of the platform somewhere and use conveyance to pipe it up, it really makes no never mind. Now we need to detach our ship, our newly built nice black and red ship from our sprueing, our support. So let's grab our grinder and we're going to take it off right up here, that block right there in fact. And I actually hope the engine's turned on so it holds itself up. And look at that. We seem to be now hovering. So let's just jump in the pilot seat. Now this is an unusual ship if you notice. We've got zero visibility through our pilot. We do, however, have a camera. If you notice on the toolbar at the bottom, number four. Number four gives us a camera. This camera is set right in the middle of our drills. We can zoom it in and out, which we don't really need to do. Or alternatively, let's just jump out of there. We go into third person view and snap away from. Let's try that again. So we need to snap it away from sprueing there we go it takes a little bit of doing so but for starters let's just land this so C to go down you notice our landing gear is blue that means it's set for auto locking so as soon as it touches the plate it should lock on there we go locked on okay now we've got an item on our toolbar number eight which is an invalid item so let's just clean that up it was the ejectors which we no longer have, so we don't need that anymore, so goodbye. Now, one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to set our drills, rather than, in this case, they're just an on-off, like when we discussed this before, uh, rather than just turning them on and then turning them off, we're going to actually probably set them, I think we'll set them up as a tool, like such. So now, and we can do it even while we're sitting here, now if we hit our left mouse button, it's going to have to be careful of the button plate there. The drill, right mouse button, it clears away material. Okay, so that's nice and useful. So we'll just jump out of here. Now, this support mechanism can be used for now for, well, basically building anything that's via a blueprint projection. So we'll actually leave it there. We'll just move our ship out the right, actually. Oh, stuck back in there again. Snap free, it's not going to. Alright, well, we'll just go up a little bit and we'll move it forward. Hopefully, that will clear it. There we go. It was actually our support mechanism which was stopping us, it was actually snapping us back into our cockpit. So, let's just move this over here and we'll set you back down there. There we go. So yeah, we can now use that same structure there to project a different blueprint or, well, yeah, no, we only need the one of these. So in this case, I don't know that we need it, although, no, I don't think we need it any further because there's no other blueprints we want to actually build. Um, I don't actually have any land-based, like, car-type arrangements, you know, land vehicles. So I'm not going to worry about building that up. So we're actually going to dismantle this because it is no longer required. So we'll just take our uranium back. 
ironically our projector is still acting as if it's got power. I'm quite surprised by that to be honest. It shouldn't be. Maximum required input here. Where's that? No, it's all turned off. Okay, so it just hasn't... Ah, there it goes. It just took a little bit. Maybe it's got a time built-in battery. And let's just grind down, oh, grind down the rest of this so it's not in the road. We don't want to risk any collisions. <laughs> both ingots. Yes, the ice, no, the ice actually falls into the category of ore, but we don't have a container dedicated to ore. So we'll stick it in there with the ingots. Speaking of which, let's go and make ourselves some more ingots. And of course we'll do that by mining ore. Okay, engines on. Undock. Unlock. got very big engines in the back so it accelerates really really fast. That's probably not a good thing but this was one of my very early creations. Its functionality is well it rips a lot of ore and a lot of ground, I'll say that much. Four. going to start here at the top. Oh, actually, speaking of which, we'd better turn off our auto locking on our landing gear, or it's liable to lock us onto this when we get too close. Alrighty, let's see what we can do with this. Everything's full. We better go and offload this before it gets any fuller. 
so we can now use our new connector over here and dock it up. stuff just dumped straight down into a single refinery that is going to have a heart attack almost because it's going to take a long time to process it all because it is only a single refinery and there we go it is just a single refinery is that clone is it taking it and we've just dumped a lot of stuff in it. I bet you we've just made our refinery full. No, it's not full. It is pulling more stuff in though. Sorry. Did grab a darn lot of stuff. overloaded it. Now nickel cobalt um, they take quite a way a while to actually refine it. Iron doesn't take long to stick it to the front. Gold and silver take a while, silicon doesn't take as long, magnesium doesn't take as long. So there's not much of that. I suppose we will then run it that way. So We've got quite a ways to wait on that, but it's generating a lot of things. If we have a look here, 4.9, 5.7, so it's going up, it's going up, um, and we still haven't gotten everything. In fact, what didn't we get? We didn't get much iron, and we didn't get any more, any more uranium. So. Let's just start this and look at the mess it made at the top here. But it worked well. Oh, come on, turn. So we're actually going to come out again from this side. What did we end up getting? Oh, okay, that looks pretty good. What does it? Not much in the way of uranium, but that could be fixed. At least it is showing the, the practicality of, of, uh, of mining ships and how to utilize a projector and a blueprint um, to be able to include them into a survival game. Now that's one of the things I find is very nice about 
space engineers is because um, you've got survival games, which are, uh, I find the most enjoyable way of playing the game. You've also got the creative environments, which let you just test ideas, play around with concepts, build up things like this sort of a ship, experiment with the different designs, and then if you if you come across or strike a, a design that you really really like, you can then use a projector and load that projector into one of your survival games and bring that new creation into your survival game for use and uh, yeah, you might find it's it quite an advantage and stuff like that. But for now, um, we will continue this uh, beginner's guide tomorrow, or at least next stream. So uh, have fun with your space engineering, uh, play around with survival and creative, uh, explore. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments here on Twitch, over on my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to look any of the past videos on this series, um, if they're not available here on Twitch, by all means, uh, jump over to the playlist over on YouTube. I've got them all archived there, going back to the very first episode, which I believe Twitch doesn't. Um, so feel free to look them over and uh, happy engineering and I shall talk to you another time.